Peace family, this is your boy Gerald. It is the Father's Day. So, for those who have earned that right, taken on that role, bend that shoulder, I want to acknowledge you for all the efforts that you've done and continue to be the best example that you know that you can because it's organic it's a ripple effect and a reflection of your character too and I felt let me take these off I wanted to share something with y'all a couple years ago I did a video right after I had came out of a traumatic experience of a failed uh, relationship. In that process, I did some true soul searching. I tapped into my spirituality, but I was determined to understand who am I? Why am I here? And in turn of doing that, I discovered through synchronicities, my purpose. In that process, I also had to acknowledge my fears, my shortcomings, and the things that I was continuously being shown not only from from whence I came, my past, as well as the foundation that I stood on, projecting on where I wish to go. Now, ultimately, everything that has to do with your being, it's always been, it's already been written. It was signed and sealed spiritually the moment you took your first breath. This is your experience. So there's a responsibility to govern it, to keep it healthy, to stay vigilant in the aspect that is called you. So, you know, these last couple of days I've been really thinking for those who've been with me since this journey you watch me come and go and discover things and I appreciate that because I live a transparent life always have always will now in that process I've put out well over a thousand videos on YouTube and thank you for subscribing thank you for just peeking in and checking on a guy just thank you for just being you and if there was something that you gained along the way through my experience then it was all divine worth it now with that being said not to try to sound mundane Several years back, I put a video out called The Power of Forgiveness. At that time, I was trying to find my way, trying to make sense of trauma, disappointment. Because one thing that I can truly say has always had a long standing in my life has been depression. like a dark cloud as we proverbially say always have been in my life and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I didn't have the coping skills or the understanding of what was being shown what was being felt what was being displayed because there's a lot of power in that you know but this past week 
I had an experience. And that experience caused me to not only tap into my wisdom of who I am, but it gave validation of what I stand on. You saying, what is it, Gerald? You see, to truly be emotionally free, you have to forgive, right? You have to. You do that for yourself. You don't do that for those who have made transgressed or wronged you in a certain kind of way. Because that is a spiritual tie. Emotional shackle. And like some, you will end up being subjugated or doing time in your mind with no release date. None. But you know what? I had a trigger this week. But I was able to navigate it because it was from someone I... I care about very dearly and conversation didn't go well saw it felt it tried to navigate but still no nothing I did it just wasn't a good day ended the call but the action or the energy that came from that call, it inspired me. How ironic, not even 72 hours later, which would be yesterday, I'm scrolling through social media and I see another trigger. Now, some of you who know my backstory know that I've made a point to find out if, indeed, I have children that I don't know, that I'm unaware of. I thought I, I can truly say, well, you know, I've been very responsible. I would like to believe that through my life. But two years ago, I discovered, no, correction, 2019, right uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, had that issue with my heart, and I realized that I was looking at someone that was a spitting image of me. Now, I know that might be a reach. But one thing that I've come to learn in my life that a parent knows his child. You just know that's that kindred spirit. It's that dead silence of acknowledgement the first moment you make eye contact because that is a creation from you. And that started my journey to find out. Have I been successful? No. Has the attempt been there? Valiantly. Because I've made a point to live my life as it's always been. An open book. All you have to do is ask the question. But I've also realized that truth, as you heard, echoed through the ethers of time from the biblical doctrine, whatever it may be for you, truth will always set you free. What is done in the dark always comes to the light. That's right. What is hidden always makes a point to be addressed because that's energy 
put out that comes from you out into the world. Some of you may know that as manifesting. So, with that being said, scrolling through social media, and I see a photo. And as I look at the photo, I realize this person is here. The irony of it is it wasn't even seven days before the same area where that photo was shot was taken. I was there. So it's like spiritual breadcrumbs so to speak because all the evidence is right in front of you what do you do with it so me being me I make a point to acknowledge and I send a message very respectfully give me a call then I send a message through direct messenger a little bit more detailed information from me to let them know I acknowledge what I see. I would like to see you. And if the possibility that won't happen, at least know the intentions were there. Here's my point. Um, on this Father's Day, it makes me realize something else. Just as you have to have the ability to understand your truth, you also have to have the same energy and ability to embrace acceptance. I don't know who this is for, who's going to see this, but I hope this will give you peace. The one thing that I've come to learn these last 10 years, 2011, yeah, 2011. Uh, you have no control of a person's actions. None. What you have control of is how you react to it. And how you allow said actions to impact yours. That is why you see a lot of times negatively where people act in impulse and the outcome is never what they intended it's always left it's always off the mark it's always short and then you have to waste correction. You have to invest additional uh, energy to correct it. And that just resonated in my spirit these last couple days that, you know what? To have peace, truly have peace, you got to come to a place of acceptance where you are. You might not get what you intend because what was intended was not for you to have. You have to come to terms with that. So what am I getting at? Some of my, let me put these out, let me put this out there to those who are parents. Look back at where you were before you came, became a parent, right? Find that point. 
Now look at the milestones, good and bad, through this said chapter in your life as a parent. And you'll come to realize that a lot of your greatest disappointments is while <laughs> you're in that role. And the one thing that I've learned about that is you see the things that disappoint you. If you truly see, not only will you see the disappointment, but you'll see yourself too. It'll cause you to ponder like, man, did I do that when I was their age? Did I react in such a manner that may have been deemed as disrespectful or arrogant? You know, I remember my mom told me, she said, you know, you'll never understand until you become a parent. You'll never understand the joy and pain that comes with that responsibility. And that is why, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are not built to be parents. Why on the flip side, those who aren't able, who are not able to biologically be parents end up being the best influence and guidance that's why I don't like using the term step because when you use step that's like alternate substitute now nah, give those people the flowers humble yourself to acknowledge but on the flip side you have some that think that because you come from me, I am entitled to that respect. And I've learned that respect is earned through action. It's not force. It is emulated, just like knowledge. No one can teach you something. They can show you something. But it's your responsibility to embrace it. So, when I saw the image of, I believe, I really believe in my heart that's my son and he's here. I also tried to look at it from a perspective of what he may be thinking because the truth of the matter is we don't have a relationship. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. We don't. He doesn't know me. He knows of me because I've made a point to make a bridge where there's no bridge, extend the olive branch. He knows where I live at. He knows everything in regards to get in touch with me because I made it so. Is it a risk? Yes. Yes. But I wouldn't be a man not to claim mine. I wouldn't care if it was out there picking cans up. I'm going to still inspire them to be the best. Now, I don't know everything. I'm still living my life. I'm still navigating my journey. And I'm determined to see it through because no one's promised tomorrow. No one. Let's make that clear. But to make that clear... Why are you allowing someone that may not have access to you, but has connection to you, to rob you of peace? 
you know, I was telling my fiance, I said, you know, no matter how old you are, how seasoned you are, you still have a responsibility for your story. Because as I used to echo all the time, everybody has a story. But it is your responsibility how it will be told. So why not be transparent? Why not? Real will always be authentic. And as long as you try, At the end of the day, when you take your last breath, you can know unequivocally you did all you could. Now, I'm not trying to sound more. Don't get me wrong. Gerald's doing great. I hate to sound in third party, but I'm fine. I'm happy every day. I find myself, damn, I'm really, really here. And with that, that also keeps me humble because, once again, none of this would have happened without the Most High. Come on, man. Nothing happens by chance. Don't you ever think that things happen by flukes, by coincidence, or just because. No. Nah. It only may be interpreted as just because, because you can't wrap your head around it, because you don't see the big picture. You know, your life is like a mosaic portrait. Everything that you do is the contrast and the colors and the accents that make the masterpiece called you. Unfortunately, some people's masterpiece are cut short because of choice. Because that was the one thing that the Most High gave man free will. And what I find, you know, what I find really ironic is this many people want to acknowledge the term karma but no one wants to acknowledge the blessing why because you have to take a point in a position of accountability and in that position of accountability requires acceptance Why am I saying that? You don't need anyone's permission to change your trajectory of your life. You don't need permission. Somebody needed to hear that. To be you. You did. You don't. You can make a decision right now. Whatever that one, whatever that habitual thought process that's coming on that idea, that spiritual gift that we were all given. I mean, why does it take a celebrity to tell you, hey, look, everybody's born a genius for you to believe them? Because it's the moment that you're able to envision said influence to actually make it a reality, your reality. I mean, think about it. I, I, was, I was telling my little guy yesterday, you wouldn't have a LeBron James or Kobe Bryant, a Michael Jordan, a Mike Tyson, a Muhammad Ali, the all the, and all that we deem as great in the sports world. The commonality amongst them all is this. They came to a place of acceptance and desire and were unwielding to yield 
whatever that said outcome was. And that's why we acknowledge their accomplishments. No matter what it is. Nothing can stop you from that. Nothing. What separates you from them is this. Focus. The mindset to unconditionally commit to it. You want to be a creator? Commit to the creation. And as long as you do that, it'll get to a point where it will become real. You'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see the situations that come from the impact of that said whatever that is. Only you know that. Now, I've been sitting on this DNA test for about six months. Now, I did one back in January and they, they messed up the sample, supposedly. So they sent me another one. And I was like, you know what? When the time is right, I'll do it again. Well, I'm going to do it again tomorrow morning. Right? Before I go to work, before I wash the crust out of my eyes, I'm going to do the sample, get it ready. And as I go to work, I'm dropping it off right at the, right at the Oahu main airport uh the, the at the at the airport because it's post office right there that's the hub for the island this sucker's going out because the one thing that i definitely do not want to do is not afford the fact that i want validation on knowing who i'm connected to and if possibility, there may be somebody searching for me, you know. Now, I know y'all are saying, well, what, Gerald, what about your relationship with your daughter? You got, you said you have a daughter. Unfortunately, I don't have a relationship with her either. Not that I don't want to. Same energy I put out for the possibility of this young man. I've been doing that same thing. I've, this is the same commitment I've had with my beloved daughter. It's just that, unfortunately, when I was married in the military, Unfortunately, don't weaponize your children. That's the most selfish thing you can do. And that just happened to be the situation. And uh, so for like 15 years, I've been like, trying, trying, sending cell phones out and trying to put the communicate, because I always have forethought with her. But she's grown now. But I know deep down the side, she still needs her father too. Every every little girl, every woman, I don't care how old you are, you long for the bond of your father. Now, yes, you can have a dad. And I salute any man that's willing to step in a young woman's life positively. There are no words. And I've, I've told her that as well. It's like, hey, because I don't know. I actually don't know. 
But if that was the case, I would shake his hand for being there in my behalf, even though I wanted to be there. But when you make a choice to weaponize your children, you set them on a course of unnecessary pain. That's why there's always the saying of there's truth is always three sides. It's yours, theirs, and the truth. And guess what? With both those, there is also something called maturity. And guess what's next to maturity? Accountability and acceptance. You know, like you, you hear the the saying, you could take a water, you could take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. You can empower somebody to be the greatness that you see in them, but if they don't see it in themselves, they'll always fall short. Why? It's their journey. It's theirs. Sometimes they may, unfortunately, you could see the dark cloud in the distance and you say, hey, you need to come on in before you get wet. If they don't share that same vision and guidance that you see, they're going to get wet. I don't know who that's for because I got a feeling there's some of you right now that are going to see this video and your greatest challenge has been the relationship that you have with your family. And we can laugh at it because you can't, you don't have the right to choose your family, but you do have the right how to love them, even if it's at a distance. So if you're waiting on somebody to apologize If you're waiting for some some type of theatrical nuance to play out, you can't do that. You you you're you're stifling your life. Don't do that. And that goes with your friends too. Because one thing that I've come to learn too is your relationships are a direct correlation of your mind your mindset so if your friends are just drama or toxic what are they doing in your circle because there's a direct correlation of something in their physical behavior that you relate to That's why when you talk to them, when you talk to them, you always want to talk positive. They can't relate. They don't have time. Who am I talking to? When you're putting in the work to invest in yourself, you can't find them. But the ironic thing about that is they're watching. And I hate to say it, they're envious too. Why? Because you're taking a step in the unknown that they could not or would not or choose not to. That's why people come into your life for a reason and a season. Just make sure whatever that time frame is, you're able to identify the dynamic. That's why people that are successful only have small talk for those who are not. That's the truth. What we got to talk about. I can inspire you, but if you don't take the time to embrace what is being given, what's the commonality there? It is none. And that's why, unfortunately, a lot of people still deal with insecurities or that crabs in the uh, crabs in the barrel mentality while other people keep it moving because nobody's promised tomorrow. Nobody.
Don't you ever think that you are. That's arrogant for you to think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Nah. Have the same energy that's needed for today. If it's priority, listen, this is for somebody. Why are you waiting for them to call you back? If it was priority to them, you be you hear from them. If you gotta go out of your way for ver for for verification or validation on said connection, that's the wrong connection. If by chance every time you interact with a certain individual or connection and you're taking a loss either emotionally financially unfortunately physically how is it in 2021 people are still beating on each other why are you allowing that to happen you do realize every time that we see these videos online that is nothing but entertainment and ver and validation for the people that don't want you to grow to say, see, look at them. That's why. That's why we don't do this. Come on. Come on, man. Come on now. But nonetheless, it's Father's Day. For that person that may see this, listen. Continue to work on you. Hopefully, in your progression, they'll see urgency, but they'll have a relate. They'll have a revelation that, you know what? I'm missing out on because that's a time I could have, but because of a fear or insecurity or a position instead of having the courage to have the conversation. You know, anything could change with a conversation. I'm just saying that blanket. I'm just putting that out there for anybody because you got some folks and I don't understand this. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Why do we see this same narrative? Why does it take somebody to be put in the ground before people to understand the value? It's too late when they're gone. Too late. Anyway, I felt compelled to put that out to somebody. Maybe you. But through it all, happy Father's Day to those who are doing the best they can. Because this is a continual growing process. Because, look, look here, parents. You're still that little boy and little girl. The older you get, the more responsibility comes with it. And the more responsibility that comes with it, guess what? It should yield value. And that value should foster love, protection, but also worth. Because you're doing it not only for yourself, but you're also doing it for the people that came before you. Remember your elders? What would they say if they could? Some of y'all know. Some of you got elders looking down like, you know you're out of pocket for that. You need to fix that. So if you can't find it in you, do it for them. Because they're watching. You guys have a great weekend. Always place your spirituality first. And as I always say, God is praying for you. And for that, for that, for that.
It helps me discern mine. Why? Because you're worth it and you're blessed. Peace.